Hey everybody, uh, this video is specifically for my blue and yellow groups, but I'll be posting it on the red and green classroom as well. This is going to be a condensed version of part one of the Women in the Right to Vote lecture series. Just want to start out, if you are inclined in Lulu Entertainment, this is an awesome parody video of um, Lady Gaga's Bad Romance, but for suffragettes. It's like way high production quality. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. So where we're starting, we're looking at the traditional views of women, and we're going to kind of bring this through to the 19th Amendment. Long before the founding of our country, most people believe that women belonged at home caring for the family. You're probably familiar with this stereotype of what a woman's role is. Um, a lot of people believe women were unable to handle many of the jobs that men performed. This gets kind of upended when in the 1800s, large numbers of women took factory jobs. This didn't change everybody's views, though. Um, laws still treated women differently from men. And some laws actually allowed women to do only specific, usually low-paid jobs. People who held the traditional view, um, these traditional views really disapproved of women voting or holding political office. They argued that politically active women, ah, they're going to leave their family responsibilities behind. They're going to upset the stability of family life. Um, women are so much more dumb than men. How could they make good decisions? Women are less able to make good political decisions. Basically, if we give women any option to be politically active, the entire world, as we know it, will crumble. How do we start to challenge this view? Okay, a couple things I want to point out to you. Um, this video here is a nice review of kind of what I just described. Lots of good detail, though, if you want to check it out. This video I was going to describe for you um, Seneca Falls Convention. By the late 1800s, people's views started to change a little bit. And again, a lot of this was based on the fact that women are taking more jobs outside of the home. So they're like literally leaving the home sphere to go into the public sphere, like the public place of work. Um, many are also going to become active in social and political issues, specifically abolitionism, which we should remember was the movement to abolish or get rid of slavery. Soon, some women will begin to insist on the right to vote or suffrage. Um, at this Seneca Falls Convention, which if you want to hear more about, you can watch that video, um, they stated that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. This should be giving you a big deja vu to the opening of the Declaration of Independence. Nevertheless, by 1900, only a handful of states had granted suffrage to women. Before 1910, um, we had the NAWSA, that was the Maine Women's Rights Group. This is the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Um, our big leaders here are Susan B. Anthony, which you probably have heard of Susan, um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and then Lucretia Mott. Uh, Lucretia Mott was integral or really important to the Seneca Falls Convention. Basically, what we're going to see emerge, the end goal is suffrage for women, but we have two different strategies. The first strategy is go state by state. You should remember that even though we have the federal government within our state governments, each state has a constitution and each state has the three branches of government, legislature, executive, judicial. In the state by state plan, the goal was let's just go to each state and get each state um, and their legislatures, let's get them to eventually pass an amendment to their state specific constitutions to allow voting for women. The other right of the same goal, the other strategy was to pass a constitutional amendment. You should remember that when we amend the constitution, it applies to the entire nation entire nation but it's really difficult because you have to get a high vote count in both the house and senate and then you need it to be ratified by two-thirds of states which is our 36 number then not only do we have these two strategies but we had a bunch of people who were against this movement big surprise um those who opposed the extending right giving the right to vote to women were called anti-suffragists and many of these people were actually women themselves. They believed that women were high strung, irrational, emotional. And again, with a lot of these things, like 
that can be true sometimes. Um, I've been a little high strung these days, stuck in the office, my beautiful couch. Um, but again, the, as we know about all stereotypes, they can be not true or apply to groups that we wouldn't think about that. Um, they thought that women weren't smart enough for this responsibility or that even if they could, they weren't educated enough. Um, really, they believe that women should stay at home, right? They, this one's kind of funny. They also thought that women were like too physically frail, that they would get tired just walking to the polling station. Um, and that also women would become masculine if they voted. And this would just like disrupt everything in society. All right, so I pulled out for you guys. I want to show you just some of the examples. Um, these are all primary sources, meaning right from the time period. Um, I love this one, a suffragette's home, right? This guy, this poor guy, he just worked hard all day. And he came home and look at the mess that his wife has left for him at home. Because she doesn't care about her children who, are they dead? Are they drunk? Like, we don't know what's going on. Is the lamp on fire? Like... What's the, what's what's going on? The problem is you let this woman out of the house and now she thinks she can vote. Look at what's happening to the family unit. Again, a home loving woman do not want the ballot. Vote no. We look here a women's mag mind magnified. This one is pretty funny, too. Clearly, all women care about are hats. I know I only care about hats. Um, correspondence, your babies, the dresses, the boys, the marriage, right? There's nothing in here in this woman's mind that would show us that she cares about politics, that she's educated enough to know enough to vote or that she deserves the vote. Um, but getting back to the suffragists themselves, um, again, these supporters, they were the suffragists. They marched, they gave speeches. Uh, they wrote to officials, newspapers. Some of them even went on hunger strikes. Like, it was a really long battle. Um, the NWA, um, National Women's Party, it should be a P instead of an A, um, those allies, the men who supported the group, they proposed amendments um, giving suffrage to women every single year in Congress for 40 years. But it didn't work. In the meanwhile, in the background, again, talking about the two strategies, the NASA, the NAWSA, continued to pursue a state-by-state -state strategy. Um, we have Carrie Chapman. She, Carrie Chapman Cat, she led the NASA. She believed in that careful state-by-state -state strategy. Um, whereas we have Alice Paul. She believed in the more aggressive strategy of focusing on a constitutional amendment. Just some images here. We have um, uh, Chapman Cat with the National Women um, Association, Suffrage Association. But then we have Alice Paul over here on the right with the um, National Women's Party. Okay, if we look at this map, and you guys are going to get a really similar map in your written assignment that's going to follow up here. Um, if we notice on this map, you know, we got purple for complete voting rights, whereas brown is no voting rights at all. The orange is kind of like more than not. And then the red is like a little bit. Um, you should notice out west, a lot of these states had allowed women the right to vote uh, before the amendment had passed, whereas on the east, they didn't. Um, we can really summarize the reasons why and say that the reason why the west gave more rights was because of geography and then culture. For example, we should remember that in the House of Representatives, representation is based on population. A lot of these Western states were not nearly as populated as our Eastern states. So they thought, okay, like if we give women the right to vote, then they'll be counted in our representation and we'll get more power in Congress. In general, the West was less tied to tradition. It was more of an experimental side of the country and they were definitely more open to giving women suffrage as you can see by this map. That's what we've got for part one. Um, what you guys are going to do now is you're going to go onto the Google Classroom and see the written assignment that I've posted for you guys. Um, you're going to want to focus on the two strategies, whether it's state by state or constitutional amendment, and kind of compare them. Um, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, next, we're going to look at World War I and the actual passage of this amendment. But for now,
Peace.